Introduction. In this section, we'll understand what casting is. Casting is a manufacturing process in which molten metal is poured into a mold to achieve a desired shape after it solidifies. It is one of the oldest and most widely used metal forming techniques. This process is ideal for producing complex shapes, large components, and for bulk manufacturing. It is widely used in automobile parts, tools, machines, sculptures, and more. Let's now understand the steps involved in the metal casting process. The first step is pattern making, where a replica of the final part is created. Next comes mold and core preparation, where the mold cavity is made to receive the molten metal. In the third step, the metal is melted until it becomes liquid. Then, it is poured into the mold carefully. As the metal cools down, it undergoes solidification and takes the shape of the mold. After cooling, the mold is broken to remove the casting. This step is called shakeout. Finally, the casting is cleaned and finished to get the final usable part. Let's understand what a pattern is. A pattern is a replica or model of the final casting part. It is used to create a mold cavity inside the molding material. The pattern is made slightly larger than the actual part to allow for shrinkage during cooling. Depending on the complexity of the shape, the pattern can be solid or split into multiple parts. Patterns are commonly made using wood, metal, plastic, or wax. Let's understand how the mold and core are prepared. A mold is a hollow cavity where molten metal is poured to form the casting shape. Molds are made using sand, metal, or ceramic materials. The pattern is placed in the sand to create this mold cavity. The mold box has two parts, the cope at the top and the drag at the bottom. A core is used to create hollow sections inside the casting. Cores are usually made of core sand and are placed inside the mold cavity. Let's explore how the metal is melted and poured. Metal is melted using industrial furnaces like cupola, induction, or electric arc furnace. The molten metal must reach its required pouring temperature, which depends on the type of metal, such as iron, aluminium, or brass. Once melted, the metal is poured into the mold using a ladle. It then flows through a gating system, which includes sprue, runner, and gate channels. Pouring must be steady and continuous to avoid air bubbles and casting defects. Once the metal is poured, the next critical stage is solidification and cooling. The molten metal gradually cools down inside the mold and begins to solidify. The cooling rate plays a major role. It affects the grain structure, strength, and surface finish of the final casting. Many metals tend to shrink during cooling. To handle this, design allowances are used. Risers are added in the mold to compensate for shrinkage during solidification. Also, if the casting is disturbed too early, it can lead to defects like cracks or internal voids. Extra notes, cooling rate can be controlled by mold material and metal type. Directional solidification is preferred. The casting should solidify from the far end to the riser. Once the casting has solidified, it's time for shakeout and finishing. First, the mold is broken to remove the solid metal casting. Then, the casting is separated from gates, risers, and any extra material. This is done using cutting or grinding tools. After that, the surface is cleaned using shot blasting, grinding, or sometimes chemical methods. Now, the part is inspected for any cracks or defects, and those are removed if found. Finally, the product may undergo machining for accurate dimensions and surface finish. Let's understand the types of casting processes. In metal casting, different methods are used depending on the design, quantity, and precision needed. The first method is sand casting. This is the most common and economical method. It uses sand to create the mold. In the diagram, the mold is divided into two parts, cope at the top 
and drag at the bottom. Molten metal is poured into the sprue, flows through the runner, and enters the cavity via the ingate. A core is placed inside the mold to form any hollow section. Green sand supports the entire structure, and a riser is provided to compensate for shrinkage during cooling. Sand casting is ideal for large parts and has a low production cost. The second method is die casting. Here, molten metal is injected into a metal mold, also called a die, under high pressure using a plunger. The metal flows through the sprue, fills the cavity, and takes the shape of the die. Once solidified, ejector pins push the casting out. Die casting provides high surface finish and dimensional accuracy, making it suitable for mass production using metals like zinc and aluminum. Let us now look at two specialized casting processes, investment casting and centrifugal casting. Investment casting, also known as lost wax casting. This process starts with creating a wax pattern that is an exact replica of the desired part. The wax pattern is then coated with a ceramic material to form a hard mold called the refractory shell. In the first diagram, you can see the wax patterns dipped into a ceramic slurry. Once the ceramic hardens, the wax is melted and drained out, leaving behind a hollow mold. In the second diagram, molten metal is poured into this ceramic mold. After the metal solidifies, the ceramic shell is broken away to reveal the final, high-precision metal casting. This method is known for excellent surface finish and high-dimensional accuracy, making it ideal for producing complex parts such as those used in jewelry and aerospace components. Centrifugal casting. This method involves pouring molten metal into a rotating mold. The rotation forces the metal outward against the mold walls using centrifugal force. In the diagram, you can observe how the mold rotates while molten metal is poured in. The spinning action helps in achieving a uniform wall thickness and eliminates impurities toward the center. This technique is especially suitable for hollow cylindrical components such as pipes, tubes, and liners and is widely used in industrial applications. Let's now take a look at shell molding, an advanced casting process known for its precision and surface finish. What is shell molding? This method uses resin-coated sand to create the mold. The resin improves the dimensional accuracy and results in a smooth surface finish. Shell molding is particularly suitable for small to medium-sized components. First diagram creating the mold. In this stage, a heated pattern is brought into contact with resin-coated sand. The heat causes a thin shell of sand to harden around the pattern, forming a rigid mold shell. This is shown in the first image. Second diagram, pouring of molten metal. The shell mold is then assembled and placed inside a flask. Molten metal is poured into the mold cavity as shown in the second diagram. The metal fills the space formed by the hardened shell. Third diagram, finished product. Once the metal cools and solidifies, the shell is broken away to reveal the final cast product. The result is a part with excellent surface quality and high dimensional accuracy. Shell molding is an ideal casting process for producing high quality, detailed parts and is widely used in automotive and industrial applications. Casting is a widely used manufacturing process that offers several benefits, but it also has a few limitations. Let's take a closer look. Advantages of casting. Complex shapes can be made easily, even intricate geometries that are difficult to machine. It is suitable for large and heavy components such as engine blocks and industrial equipment parts. There's a wide choice of metals and alloys, making casting highly versatile. The process is cost-effective for mass production, especially when producing large quantities. Internal cavities and hollow sections can also be created using cores inside the mold. Limitations of casting. Surface finish is often rough, 
requiring additional finishing work. Dimensional accuracy is generally lower than that of machining. Defects such as porosity, cracks, and air bubbles may occur during the process. It's not ideal for thin or small precision parts, where tight tolerances are critical. And finally, post-processing like machining or cleaning is usually necessary to achieve the final shape and finish. Casting is highly efficient for producing large and complex components, especially in bulk. However, it may require post-processing and may not be suitable for precision applications. Casting is a highly versatile manufacturing method used across a wide range of industries. Let's explore where casting is commonly applied. Automobile industry. Casting is used to manufacture engine blocks, cylinder heads, and brake drums, all of which are large, heavy, and complex components that benefit from casting's ability to form intricate shapes. Aerospace sector. Here, casting is used for turbine blades and structural parts where strength, precision, and lightweight construction are crucial. Machinery. Components such as gear housings, pump bodies, and machine beds are cast because they require strength and rigidity, often in bulk quantities. Construction industry. Casting is ideal for making pipes, valves, and manhole covers, which must be durable and able to withstand harsh environments. Consumer goods. Items like cookware, sculptures, and hardware tools are often made using casting. Thanks to its ability to produce both functional and decor, art, and decoration, casting allows artists and craftsmen to create statues, ornaments, and intricate metalwork, offering both creative freedom and structural reliability. From heavy-duty industrial parts to artistic creations, Casting plays a key role in a vast array of fields, making it one of the most important processes in modern manufacturing. Let's summarize what we've learned about the casting process. Casting is a highly versatile manufacturing process used to create complex metal parts that would be difficult or expensive to make by other methods. It involves several key steps, pattern making, mold preparation, melting, pouring, cooling, and finally, finishing. Different types of casting serve different purposes. Some are perfect for mass production, while others are better suited for high precision components. The process is widely applied across industries, including automotive, aerospace, industrial machinery, and even art and decoration. And despite certain limitations, Casting remains a backbone of metal manufacturing, thanks to its ability to produce strong, detailed, and economical parts.